Uh, looking at this from uh, the government's point of view, how much leverage would they have had over companies like Amazon, uh, PayPal, MasterCard, all, and all of those who have now said to, to WikiLeaks, we don't want to touch you at the moment? Uh, I think, again, judging from the uh, aftermath of 9-11, quite a bit. I remember then that pressure was put, for instance, on Swiss banks at that point to reveal accounts, et cetera, et cetera, and that was done promptly. So, yes, I think they have leverage. And in the longer term, do you think these companies are, are going to kowtow uh, to the U.S. government ad infinitum? Well, you have to ask that. I, I can't speak for Visa and MasterCard, to be honest, so I can't tell you that. But, what you know, what but do you think, not only as, as a professor, but also as an American citizen, ab about the way that the U.S. government is approaching this? Is it making it a bigger problem, perhaps, for itself uh, than it need to have been, or is there something uh, darker behind all of this? Well, yeah, I have my suspicions about the whole affair, even about Julian Assange, to be frank, because he comes from a murky background. He was affiliated with intelligence agencies. And uh, we have, for, for instance, uh, President Obama last year appointed somebody called Cass Sunstein as the, uh, the, office, uh, the head of the Office of Information. And uh, this reminds me of sort of the ministries of information we used to have here in the Arab world and elsewhere in Soviet countries. And one of his premises was that the government should infiltrate social networking sites, should plant false conspiracy theories, should uh, raise sort of false... Uh, uh, you know, have these false flag operations of sorts, psych op operations, etc. So if you read his paper, which he wrote at Harvard on this issue, uh, you will find that a lot of it rings eerily familiar to what is going on today. You're going to have to help me a little bit here because I'm not quite sure I would, if I was uh, in charge of the U.S. government, I'd want to see a lot of that stuff out there, whether it's dangerous uh, in against the interests of national security or, or simply embarrassing? Why would they want it to get but out? But how much of it has, in fact, been embarrassing to the U.S. government and how much of it has been embarrassing to, again, I repeat, Arab leaders or uh, China? I mean, we knew China was spying on Google. We knew a lot of Arab leaders had suspicions about Iran, etc. We knew about Putin. We knew about Berlusconi. A lot of this is trivia. And all it really does, if you drop the balance sheet at the end, in my view, is to, it doesn't really embarrass the U.S. government. There are no real state secrets revealed. Nobody's going to be held accountable uh, in Washington. At best, it could serve the interest of those who are, for instance, agitating within the CIA or the government for a war against Iran, for, you know, putting more pressure on China, etc. These agendas are served by WikiLeaks thus far. Uh, I don't see much in the ways of sort of leading to real change in Washington. Now let's go to the UK, back to Birmingham. Uh, Jonathan Hemus there. I suggested that uh, give you a couple of minutes to think about how you might advise WikiLeaks itself on, on sorting out its problems. But in a sense, I mean, the, the oxygen of publicity uh, has been fantastic for it. Do you think it needs any help? Well, I was going to make exactly that point. I think uh, one of the things that WikiLeaks probably doesn't need is uh, advice on public relations. It's done a fantastic job of getting this um, story ac across. And interestingly, it's done that both via conventional media, but also very much uh, driven by social and online media as well. And it's done one of the things that all good uh, PR campaigns do it has utilized the influence of third parties to carry its message for it to the extent now that a lot of this story is being driven by third parties rather than by WikiLeaks itself. So purely from a PR point of view, it's done a superb job in getting this story across. What do you make of Mark Farhar's suggestion that uh, all of this could have been put out there on purpose by the US government? Frankly, it's something that I wouldn't have any, any particular knowledge of. Uh, I think from, um, from the point of view of the uh, organizations that we're discussing now, the MasterCards and, and the Visas and the PayPals, I bet they wished it hadn't been put out there because it has given them an enormous uh, crisis management challenge that maybe they couldn't have anticipated. Good crisis communication is often about the planning and preparing for it, um, this is potentially a situation that they hadn't planned or prepared for. And, of course, there's a second crisis for them as well, which is the bringing down of their websites or the uh, difficulty that people are having um, to, to, to pay for goods using, 
using their services, which is a secondary crisis. People are now asking how robust uh, are their systems and how secure is my information. So they actually have a, a double crisis to deal with.